Hello everyone, my name is Jennifer. I'm currently 22 years old and I'm going to tell you a story of how I met my handsome and wonderful husband. My husband is very hardworking. He's been doing everything he can in order to buy our own house. Because of his job requirements, he must work abroad for six weeks or more at a time. The pay is too good to turn down, even when there would be days when I would miss him terribly. We mostly stayed in contact in those six weeks through the usage of messages and phone calls. It wasn't the same as in person, but I knew he was doing it for our future's sake. Currently, we reside in a small, rented flat that is small and away from practically anything. It was all we could afford to save money for a house. It wasn't bad for two people living there. It consisted of one bedroom, one bathroom, and then a living room that was connected to the kitchen. It was affordable and practical for someone our age, just out of college. What we hated was the commute in order to get anywhere would be difficult. To give you an idea, the nearest supermarket is half an hour drive or almost an hour commute by a bus. There was one time where my husband needed medication for his headache, our car had broken down, and it took over two hours total due to rush hour. I guess his parents found out through a conversation when we went over on our usual Friday dinner with them. I love them so much. They were kind, funny, and the best parent-in-law that I could ask for, both in their mid-forties and successful in their careers. My husband's mother was a nurse that worked mostly on night shifts. My husband's father was a successful lawyer, looking to retire soon. We all got along great, and I loved them as if they were my own parents. I remembered that Friday night clearly. My husband was seated next to me, across from his parents, when he started to complain about just how inconvenient our rented flat was located. It simply isn't worth the cost we pay each month for, he groaned, shaking his head. I know, hon. I agreed and gave a supportive smile. But it'll be worth it when we finally save enough for our deposit for that house. Think about it. It's only walking distance to the town center and everything. Both my parents-in-law looked at each other, as if they were having a secret conversation with their eyes. They both nodded and then my husband's father smiled at us. He placed his large and firm hand over my hand resting on the table. I swore my heart skipped a beat for a moment, but it must be because of what he said next. Well, why don't you move in here since we have an extra empty bedroom? It seems perfect. We're not using it, and it'll help you save on the needed deposit for the house, too. It kills two birds with one stone. My mother-in-law nodded in agreement. My husband is always lonely when I work night shifts anyways. It'll be fun for him to have someone around when I'm not there. We were thinking of a puppy, but hey, this works too. Both my husband and his mother laughed, and I felt my father-in-law's hand gripping tightly for a moment. And just like before, my heart skipped a beat. I felt a blush rising to my face as I pulled away gently, closing my legs while looking anywhere else. What was that about? Shortly after, we moved everything in. The flat didn't have much of our things anyways. Both of us worked and we decided most of the furniture would be donated. We were going to save enough anyways for a house and the new set of furniture when we moved out anyways. I was rather excited about the move. It was a great chance to save and my in-law's house was much nicer than our flat. A week into moving in, my husband had to go on another trip. This time, he was flying to Europe for almost a month. I watched him pack his things into his black suitcase as he ran through his itinerary with me. It was almost routine at this point as he kissed me, telling me he'll miss me and he'll call me every day. I always hated seeing him leave. It made me feel lonely, but I reminded myself it was different this time. After all, I was living with his parents. But I soon realized it was also the week where my mother-in-law had extra shifts forcing to sleep in a hotel across from the hospital where she worked. For some reason, the thought of being alone with my husband's father made my stomach turn in excitement and nervousness. I remember it vividly. I was staring up at the dark sky. The clouds were heavy and looming ominously over us. I always hated thunder as a child and often got scared easily. It carried into adulthood. It was the roaring sound, like it was the end of the world that terrified me. The thunder was too sudden, almost without warning. When my husband was home, he would rub my back soothingly, but I didn't have the heart to tell him it wasn't enough, that I was still scared during the thunderstorms. I yelped at the sudden strike of the thunder, jumping up in surprise before I could catch myself. Are you scared, Jenny? My father-in-law asked. Jenny. A nickname he had come up with soon after moving in. I had to admit, it made me feel special. My husband didn't even give me any nicknames of sorts, despite me calling him Honey. Just a bit. I laughed nervously, rubbing the back of my neck. I stepped away from the window, taking a seat onto the couch across from the small one-person sofa. You must probably think I'm a child. No, not at all. He shook his head sternly in reply. I watched him set down his phone onto the table next to him before getting up. 
I realized for the first time the buzz in the air as we held each other's eyes. He was well built for someone his age. His tall and erect posture as he stared down at me made me drink in his feature even more. Curiously, my eyes never left him as he made a long and powerful stride till he was just mere inches from me. He then took a seat right next to me. I could feel our body heat radiating off one another. What was happening? I gasped out in surprise when he took my hands into his. My heart beat erratically by the look in his eyes. It was filled with determination as he gently lifted me and placed me onto his lap. Another thunderstruck, but I was too hypnotized by his touch and his eyes. I swallowed, asking myself over and over if this was a dream. I mean, it had to be. What are you doing? I gathered my courage to ask. Comforting you. He retorted easily and placed a kiss on my cheeks. I could feel my cheeks reddening, and as another thunder roared, I didn't even flinch. It seemed every time that it did thunder, he would kiss me on the cheek. But for some reason, I wanted more. This time I was hoping and praying for another thunder to roar. My prayers were answered momentarily, and when he leaned in for another kiss on my cheeks, I turned so our lips met. Then, his lips were on mine. And unlike my husband's lips, which were soft and gentle, his was rough and wild. My husband's kisses were full of love and passion. My father-in-law's were full of uncharted lust. His kisses were like black holes, pulling you in and keeping you there until you were lost. The next thing I knew, I was gently lifted from the couch with strong arms. I didn't bother asking what was going on as he led us upstairs. It was so wrong, and I knew it. He was my husband's father, much older than us, and not to mention, he was family. That night, we made love in every single position we could think of. It was reckless, wild, and crazy. Yet the thought of the fact that I was sleeping with my husband's father made me want more and more till I was consumed with him. The next morning, as I cuddled up in his chest, I looked up at him. This is wrong. You don't need to tell me that, he would joke. But how was it? Good. I swallowed, looking away. Good wasn't enough to even explain the hours of lovemaking we did all night. I didn't even know how he wasn't tired. I didn't even know how he wasn't tired of going that many rounds. How could I muster the courage to tell him that he was better than my husband? He chuckled, kissing my temples. Let's agree this was a one-time thing and we'll never speak of this again. Not to my son, nor to your mother-in-law. I could only nod, a twisted emotion of disappointment swelling in my stomach. He was the best I had had, and now I had to live with him for God knows how long? I repeated to myself that it was wrong, and that my mother-in-law was coming home anyways. It wasn't often she stayed at the hotel when she worked extra shifts anyways, so the chances of this happening were slim to none. That was what I thought until a week later when she stated she'll be staying with her sister for a couple of days due to a family emergency. My husband was still in Europe to close a deal for work, and the night was getting lonely. I rolled around in my bed, tracing my lips. I couldn't help myself or control my urges anymore. Pushing myself out of bed, I thought of if this was what I really wanted. And in my reckless mind, I didn't have to think twice. When I entered my father-in-law's room and with one sweep of his eyes on me, we both knew what we truly wanted. And we made love every chance we got in the house without our spouses there. In the shower, he would clean every part of my body slowly, like he was trying to memorize every curve. In the kitchen while I was preparing dinner, in just an apron with my whole back exposed, it led to another intense lovemaking on the counter. I felt like I was on cloud nine from the attention I got from him. We both swore that once his wife was back, this would all end. It would be our dirty little secret we would take to our graves. Until then, let's enjoy each other's bodies. And we did. There wasn't any part of the house where we didn't make love. Be it the kitchen counter, the couch, the walls, both our beds where we had been sleeping with our spouses— do you trust me? He murmured into my ears one day. I nodded. He was my father-in-law, someone that opened up his home to us in order to save money to move into a house. He gently walked over to his closet and produced one of his ties. He then wrapped it around my eyes, and my senses heightened. I was blindfolded. The mere thought was so hot. And that was one of the mistakes we made that afternoon when we made love again with the door open to my bedroom. Because, as it turned out, my husband had come home early, by a few weeks, to surprise me. He had gotten a really big promotion, and he wanted to come home early to surprise me with a gift and share the good news. Only he had found me blindfolded while his father hovered over me, making love. I never got to see the look on his face, but according to my father-in-law, something in his son broke that day. Shortly after, I decided to leave with my father-in-law. My husband wouldn't even look me in the eyes anymore, no matter how much I said I was sorry. That it was a silly mistake led on by my loneliness— I thought there was no saving us in the marriage, so we both divorced. And with my husband's father also leaving his wife, I thought we would be okay. Turns out, I was wrong. He changed after that day. 
After signing over practically everything to his ex-wife, I thought we could start anew together, but it didn't. In fact, that was when the fighting began. He started to blame me for everything. He told me I ruined his family. That it was my fault this all happened because I lured him when we both had mutually consented. To this day, I regretted what happened. I miss my husband, my ex-husband, more than anything else. My main takeaway? Don't allow your desire and hunger to outweigh what is right. Don't allow temptation to take a bite out of the forbidden fruit because nothing good will come of it. I made the mistake and now I'm paying the price for it. My father-in-law had left shortly after to beg forgiveness and I'm left alone. My heart is in shatter and I lost everything that mattered. I had let my judgment and the heat of the moment cloud my judgment. Now, my husband who I thought would be the love of my life is gone and there's nothing I can do to win him back.